This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the new Full Battle Rattle Studios. And I think a lot of people in Hollywood may not like that. Anyway, lots of politics bleed into a lot of things. The Grammys were great again this time around. At least the red carpet was. Joy Villa wore an amazing pro-Trump Make America Great Again dress right in the belly of the beast. Today, we're joined by the man who designed the now famous number. He's a legal immigrant, a gay activist, and a Christian Trump supporter. Mr. Andre Soriano will join us in just a moment. It is a can't-miss edition of the Palin Update. Plus, we'll have the latest national and Alaska headlines in Sarah Palin News. We'll visit the Crow's Nest with Tanya Crow in California. Also from the Golden State, Kelly Carlson is on target. The Millennial Forecast with Sarah Hagmeyer coming up from New Jersey. And we'll head to Texas for a brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. The Palin Update is sponsored by Full Battle Rattle. Full Battle Rattle, helping veterans suffering from combat-related disabilities through the healing power of music. Learn more at Facebook.com slash Full Battle Rattle ABQ. Well, you've surely seen it by now. Recording artist Joy Villa's bold move at the Grammys, wearing a beautiful pro-Trump dress. Conservatives and common sense folks applauded. Meantime, liberal heads exploded. But today, we learn about the dress and find out it's all about love. The man behind the fashion, Andre Soriano, is here to discuss this now world-famous piece of clothing. And right now, we welcome Andre Soriano to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Andre, how are you? Hi. Um, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me in your show. I'm doing terrific, sir. Thank you for asking and yourself. I'm well, and it's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> and I got to tell you now, it's I mean, an honor, sir. we're going to talk honor. about the dress from the Grammys, obviously. But you're the man now behind one of the top three most famous political blue dresses of all time. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. I, I mean, you saw, it was so unexpected. <laughs> you I, saw, I didn't really, um, I didn't plan on this or anything. You it's, saw what Melania wore uh, at the inauguration, and then I would say yours. And then, of course, that one involving Bill Clinton that we won't discuss tonight. But of the three, oh my three blue dresses. <laughs> Dresses, I think you're up there in the big three now. But uh, oh my goodness, it's such an honor, sir! It's such an honor. Let me ask you about your friend who wore the dress, and and how did the whole idea come up, and and why was she the perfect person to wear it, and you the perfect guy to design it? Well, sir, I, I've been um, I've been working with Joy Villa for uh, since you know the two past Grammys, and she's always been you know very controversial, and then and this time around, uh, you know, through the primary and what's happening in our country i you know and then the i actually designed something for joy already you know because andre this is our concept i'm like okay uh you know the concept is about static it's about the sun you know please uh it's uh oh, okay so i got the fabric i showed her the sketch kind of like a weave uh, between yellow orange and red gown that i rendered for her and then there was the inauguration. And then what happened? There was a march. You know, there are big names and also, uh, you know, people that are powerful that's, that's really sending the wrong message, you know, that they want to bomb the White House or really, really their narrative is like about, about dividing our country. And I'm like, Joy, you know, I was, I immediately called her and I'm like, Joy, I was, uh, I was really sobbing because I, I have so much love for this country, you know has given me so much opportunities in this country that that we just need to move it forward. So I told Joy, you know what? I'm gonna make you a Trump gown. But first and foremost, did you have did you vote it for um for our uh for Donald Trump? And it's like, yeah I did. Oh perfect, perfect. So what we did is uh I told her I'm gonna make her a Trump gown. So I went to my front porch, took the flag and I started blaying it out first, the whole flag. And, you know, we have to make a statement about not division. It's about love. You know, joy is about love. I believe in love. Mother taught me, you know, during our earlier years through charity, you know, we go to first places to, to do, um, you know, give, give baskets through, through Christmas. So that's what really happened. 
And and you talk about this all the time. You say stop hate, share love. You talk about peace, yes, we, and then we hear yes, from sir. these people on the left and from the media, and they say that's exactly what Donald Trump is not. So what have you seen in the president when he was running and now? Because I agree with you 100%, Andre, but I want to hear from you. Why do you believe that this president is the right guy to stop hate and share love? Well, because I agree well, with absolutely, you. Absolutely, because, because it's America first. It's all about the American people in our beautiful country this country is so much it's so beautiful it's so great you know how much how much love there is in this country that have um that have emailed me andre thank you so much and you and joy are so magnificent and it's just so amazing and it's not just here in america but all the way across europe that they're really sharing their love every evening and, I, and the philippines I the philippines American i hope spirit. and the yes, Fi- philippines uh, yes, <laughs> Of course, also in the Philippines, and <laughs> and and the amount of love and just like you know, um, they're like, oh my goodness, you guys, that that's such a wonderful thing, and it's so unexpected. And by the way, my my room, uh, my our neighbor, you know, just down the street, uh, because she's very close to ours, and we we would have dinner here, and came to my studio, and she said, oh my God, Andre, I love it, but um, do you think? You should make something to cover it because you know that Hollywood is really, they don't like Trump. I'm like, really? Okay, so what I did was I told Joy, Joy, okay, I'm going to make another kind of like flowy dress. So we kept it secret because we want to really make a message. You know, this is all about, you know, through, through our art, you know, Joy has the voice from singing and with, uh, with me as like creating just like fabric and we express ourselves not just that, but believing in our country to our artistic ability. And that's what we did. Well, I mean, it, everything blew up that night. I mean, my phone everywhere. Governor Palin recognized it right away. Oh, I love, I love Governor Palin. Send her my love. It's and amazing. I, I wanna, I'm one of her biggest fans. Uh, well, we love to hear that. And, and I want to <laughs> ask you this. Um, Another issue that obviously people are talking about and and bashing the president for is immigration. And, you know, this man is not against immigration. He's very much for it. But the key word is legal. You are a legal immigrant and you are achieving the American dream. No doubt about it. You've you've gotten your designs out there, obviously, with this big splash. But you've you know, you've been on the television programs and everywhere else, uh, you know, showing your craft. What do you think about the whole immigration situation as a guy who did it the hard way? Well, the the point is because there was uh, during the Marcos regime, my uh, my mom's friend called my, uh, you know, was telling her, it's like Josie, you have to do something with your kids, you know, because the uh, Philippines during the time frame was was divided in in the Philippines, you know, before the Aquino. So, uh, anyways, uh, make long story short, you know, we migrated here, and you know, as a legal and, you know, I mean, I love all the ben- like for instance. I I am so grateful that I I never even know that I'm gonna be on the Rihanna show and they called me, you know, and and that's just like the American dream, you know, for me. That's like I I never, you know, the opportunities are here. That's why it's so sad when 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 I'm when I'm driving. Like oh my goodness, this country is so fruitful yet alone there is signs that's like you know please help me I'm homeless. There is, you know, those are the things that makes you wonder. Like, oh my goodness, you know, and now that if there's jobs here in America, like President Trump, he's he's already bringing a gazillion of jobs here in our country, in our beautiful country. So that's that's it's so unbelievable, you know. And, you know, I, like I say, you know, we could talk about, I can talk about it, Governor Palin could talk about it, but when you talk to someone who is a legal immigrant, I mean, I've found that uh, folks like yourself, they're more fired up about this than anyone because they know there is the right path, yes, and yes, then you've sir. earned it, and, and like you said, the Rihanna deal, they contacted you because your work is good. That's why, not for any kind oh, of handout you, or nonsense or anything like that, and you've been able to do that. You're a gay rights and activist. It's so funny, so funny to, um, with, uh, with me and Joy. It's like, Andre, do you know that I'm black and you're like gay Filipino. Yeah, like, I know, they're great. When I did say, when I when I design, I don't really think of anything. It's our right. freedom of exp- exactly. freedom of, ex- of expression. Exactly. And then, oh, oh, okay. Um, I never really, you know, really thought of it that but, way. But, but it's the message of putting the country together because everyone is just like totally pounding the president. And I'm like, that is not right. 
their narrative narrative is completely wrong and you know it's about peace love and putting you know it, it wouldn't be so nice like if you're like on the street like back in the 50s Everyone is talking to your neighbor. Oh, hi, how are you? Regardless whether you're rich or poor, it's the unity of our, or not just our country, but the whole the whole planet Earth, uh, seriously. And it's so amazing that, you know, I mean, there's already a lot of hunger, you know. I mean, these rich people, they should donate their money to these to charities that are really real, not being corrupt. And, and just like, you know, there's so much hunger in this planet that, this, the, all these people should pay attention. That's really what matters. You know, not, not having a breast implant or your Botox. I mean, fine. But there is people that are there or, or having like, you know, those things that are like, you know, I, I grew up in a charity family, you know, that believes in charity. That's why I say those things, you know. Well, and you, you mentioned the fifties. I bet you liked some of the fashion then too, right? Instead of what we see today, oh, I love the we 50s see fashion. men They're in the fine. men in the grocery store in their pajama pants. Now, I mean, everything's gone down the hill in that way. So, as a designer, <laughs> you're probably cringe, right? Um, I love I love that era. The fifties are fun. I mean, all all generations are fun from the twenties, thirties, forties up to date. Now, you but, you, um, you said you've gotten this great feedback, and 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 Joy has had her her record sales go up. So. You know, we've seen this with other groups who have stood up to the politically correct nonsense. What does this show you, too, from a business standpoint? I think, you know, you have all these people trying to cater to this whole hate Trump movement. And here you two stepped out and did it the other way. And you're reaping the benefits in in many ways. And I think that's another message here. God bless America. That's what really happened. It's the spirit of the American people that has been shut down you know, by by the 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 elites or the one that you know, I can't believe that that it, that's happening. And in any event, you know, it's a blessing. I mean, like I said, now um, like my friend Kaya Jones. Oh my God, she was like like fearful, like you know, between uh, you and Joy, you guys are so beautiful. Thank you so much. I I before I didn't have the I didn't have the voice, but you guys have opened the door, like especially in the Hollywood. You know, they're all like the 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 closet Trump where right. they couldn't do anything, not just here, not just here in America, but all across the globe. I mean, the bomb- I w- I'm being bombarded with a lot of love, like, thanks. I'm like, I- I'm just like, my- I can feel that the-, the spirit of this country, not just this con- our country, our beautiful country, but the whole world, even in Europe. Someone emailed me, you know what? I, I couldn't, be- I'm not from there. I can't vote. But I love Trump, and you guys are amazing. I'm like, oh, that's such a high honor, you know, to say that. So it's really, I really hope that we've really made a difference, you know, because we just want to voice out. It's all about peace and unity, you know. If we're, you know, and give him a chance for four years and even eight. I mean, he's already bringing jobs here. It's so amazing. And you mentioned these other countries, a lot of them now looking for their Trump. You see a lot of candidates who are doing well uh, in their elections who have that same populist message. So it is it is really great to see. Andre Soriano, uh, thank you. I mean, it's it's wonderful what you did, and uh, people oh, are excited about so it. Much, now, i got to ask you the, the big question. You know, when could we see a Mama Grizzly dress, you know, something with a bear <laughs> for Governor Palin with the glasses? What do you think? I know you could do it. Well, of course, one moment, please. I just need her measurement. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. A true professional. There he is. He's not going to do anything yeah. half-baked. All right, Andre. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to direct well, everybody you to your so website, andresoriano.com. Give our best to thank joy. Thank you very much. Um, and we're, well, it's President's Day on Monday. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, we're going to be following you uh, and see how things happen. But we hope that, you know, you, you tune the haters out and, and you, you listen to these great messages because a lot of people have your back and a lot of people are very happy oh. with what you did because <laughs> a lot of them weren't brave enough to do it. And, and you guys were. So thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. And have a, a wonderful evening. Have a fabulous evening. For more, please head to andresoriano.com. Now it's time for Sarah Palin News headlines and more about Governor Palin. Sarah Palin talks Abraham Lincoln on the anniversary of our 16th president's birth. Rest in peace, General Hal Moore, an American warrior. Snowflakes melt and heads explode after a bold move on the red carpet at the Grammys. Palin calls First Lady Melania Trump a real feminist, strong, smart, capable, independent, overcoming, with a heart beating for her child. Palin examines a deep state 
America's destructive threat. Nugent 2018? Stay tuned. Lunch with a loved one. Bring the governor, Bristol, Trig, and Trip together for a very special day at school. Once again, Governor Palin stands with Rand. The irrelevant media exposed. Hollywood unhinged like never before, and it's kind of hysterical. Concern from the governor as Rove cronies are mentioned as possible White House staff. Iron Dog 2017 is here, and Todd Palin is back for his 24th race. And Governor Palin features my new SarahPalin.com piece on Todd Palin and the Iron Dog race. Best of luck to team number 20. To read about all these stories, visit the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page. And to see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, and to read her devotionals, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and don't miss the new SarahPalin.com. Now let's head to the crow's nest. Here's Tanya Crow. Thanks, Kevin. What a week. I don't know if anyone else out there experienced quite a week like I did, but I'm kind of assuming that I'm not the only one out there, but it was so much pressure. I felt like everything I did and thought was under a microscope. No BS. (laughs) I couldn't get away with anything this week, which I think is an actual blessing in disguise. That's for sure. Hold your feet to the flame. Kind of what um, our president did to the media this week. It kind of seemed like that was the theme of the week, which I'm always appreciative of pressure, I think, because there's an analogy that I was taught a long time ago that always stuck with me. And that is that, you know, in science, only under an immense amount of pressure does that coal become a diamond. And so for us, I think it's the same. You know, we have this great potential. And sometimes we have to have a certain amount of pressure to push us to fulfill that and for me that's kind of what I kept coming back to with this whole media frenzy that occurred after President Trump's press conference when he was trying to hold the press accountable for what it is that is their responsibility and how they're not fulfilling that responsibility and the bias that's been accumulating throughout these many decades has come to a crossroads where the press either faces the music or doesn't. It's about time that the governed be respected. This is Tanya Crow with Mama Grizzly Radio. Tanya Crow on Mama Grizzly Radio. More from the Crow's Nest next week. Now on Target with Kelly Carlson. Hey, Kevin. I'm here with my husband, Dan. I called him in for help because he and I recently went to a concealed carry class to understand uh, the best ways of applying for one. And while we were there, we were handed out the new firearms legislation in California. It's fun. Um, I'm sure some of your listeners live in California, so I thought I'd go over it, at the very least, the rifles, and for those of you that aren't in California, have a hilarious time listening, and maybe you'll see us in a neighborhood near you one day coming up. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start reading off uh, the new legislation, and then my husband's going to put it in English for me. So the new version of the law will revise the definition of assault weapon to mean the following. Number one, this is for rifles. A semi-automatic centerfire rifle that does not have a fixed magazine but has one of the following. A. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. Honey, doesn't that mean like the ARs? At least that's what comes to my mind visually. Yes, pretty much all the AR platforms. Which is a very, very common rifle. Yes. Yep. Anything else? Um... Yeah, you know, you can have pistol grips on shotguns and all kinds of things, but they they address that down here under shotguns. Okay, Um, B would be a thumbhole stock. Is that similar to, like, on my pellet rifle? Well, that's, yes. Similar. Um, Yeah, and it was a way that people were getting around the the pistol grip um, issue because it it turns a a fixed stock more into a a pistol grip stock for the most part. 
C, a folding or telescoping stock. So that's like sliding forward, backwards, or folding. Yeah, yeah. So anything that makes the rifle shorter, um, they're, yeah, they're making illegal. This is really funny, you guys. D is hilarious. It's like, which one doesn't fit under this list? <laughs> so we just named off the folding or telescoping stock. D, a grenade launcher. Yeah. Oh, so we're going to have to get rid of all of our grenade launchers, yeah, I, right? Yeah, I, I didn't know they were legal before. Yeah, nor did I. I mean, I thought we all could have them. Okay. <laughs> wow. And that's just a scare tactic for people who don't understand firearms when they read this. Um, e, a flash suppressor. And this affects a lot of people. Yeah. So for a barrel to be the legal length, it has to be 16 inches. So... Um, some barrels are under that width, you know, if you remove the flash suppressor or whatever. So you're going to have to remove any flash suppressor type thing, um, which is more just, uh, you know, the whole term of flash suppressor, there's so many definitions to it. But there's things you can get to replace it to stay within the legal length of the barrel length by, you know, like a compensator or those sort of things. I still don't even understand what's so scary about a flash suppressor, but I'm, not, I'm no expert. I just, it's, um, yeah, it, it, not that you have to explain it. It yeah. just doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So F a forward pistol grip, which in our minds, isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a handle that attaches to the, you know, the front stock of your gun or the, you know, the heat uh, shield around the barrel. Um, you and don't, you don't even like them. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I used them for a while on the teams and, I, I got, you know, I realized I could be much more accurate without them and, you know, it, less snag hazards when you get rid of it too. So. But it's still such an inconvenience for everybody. Yeah. Okay, so number two, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has a fixed magazine with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. Explain that. Okay, so if your magazine cannot be removed, but if it can hold more than 10 rounds, that's going to be illegal or it's going to be under... The assault weapon ban. Hmm, okay. Uh, number three, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. Yeah, so this this is a big deal because um, before to, you know, not fall into the short-barreled ri rifle category, um, it, your rifle had to be 26 inches or longer. Now it's got to be 30 inches or longer. So that's I don't mind long rifles, but that's just going to make a lot of people have to make some serious modifications or get rid of something they have that cannot be made longer. So, It's like when I read this legislation, it seems like everybody's been convicted of a crime. We've yeah. all been you know, <laughs> convicted. We're being punished. You have yeah. to either ditch your rifles buy new ones, fix them, add a bullet button, take the bullet button off. It costs people so much money, time, inconvenient, and it just seems like you're constantly being accused of a crime that you have no... Um, well, and it doesn't make anything safer because the, right. the bad guys are still going to get whatever they want, bring it in, buy it here on the black market. This also creates a lot of black market issues. Um, of course. And uh, we've seen certain Democratic senators profit from that like up in san francisco um it's a party in california <laughs> it really is yeah cool well kevin next time we're going to go over pistols um if anything i hope this is i hope people around the country are just laughing at us because we're laughing and crying at the same time <laughs> this is kelly carlson with her husband tracker dan for mama grizzly radio tune in for more on target next week it's time for the Millennial Forecast. Here's Sarah Hagmeyer. Thanks so much, Kevin. Just last week, Bessie DeVos was blocked by protesters from entering a Jefferson Middle School Academy, which is in D.C. They yelled at her to go back and shame on her. And it's just sickening. Betsy's school of choice plan and having school vouchers and a lot of her other ideas will really benefit the failing education systems in our country. But many Democrats don't even want to give her a chance. And I just think, how could anyone actually be against Betsy DeVos? 
how could anyone who had the opportunity to go away to college be against Betsy DeVos? And especially, how could the, lib the liberal millennial whack job who currently goes away to college, who is currently living up the life, be against Betsy DeVos? Anyone who has gone away to college has had choices. They made a decision to go away to college. They could have gone far away to college. They could go to community college. They could go to tech school. But they had choices. And I don't get how anyone who had chose to continue their education be against a woman who wants to help younger children and their parents have those kind of choices too. Because everyone should be able to make decisions for their education that would best be for their future, just like how college students do that for their careers. They go to the best business schools, they go to the best nursing schools, whatever the case may be. And making those choices shouldn't be just for college, and I think it's pretty ignorant for millennials to not understand that. But yet, what else do we expect from the snowflake generation? Regardless, Betsy DeVos is going to make some big changes in the education system and bring some much needed opportunity to the children that are stuck in these failing school systems, particularly in the inner cities. And we can forecast that millennials will not be noticing because they will either be too busy crying about Betsy playing with Play-Doh, or coloring in their coloring books while learning about gender studies. So for Mama Grizzly Radio, I'm Sarah Hagemeyer, and that was your Millennial Forecast. And next week we'll have a new edition of the Millennial Forecast right here on the Palin Update. Now the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. We all know the chicken little story, right? What's the moral of that story? It really is instructing us to have courage when a challenge arises, to remain calm and make the best decision with the information we have. But the bigger point is to not overreact, not panic, and not to worry, because that never helps anything. Chicken little is so scared and hysterical, all he can do is overreact. Well, this legislative session, all I have watched all over the country are chicken little cousins creating panic all over the place. In several states alone just this week, using fear and hysteria to stop or try to stop the Convention of States resolution because as these anti-constitutionalists would have you believe, the sky is falling if we use Article 5 and the Constitution to save the nation. Kansas and South Dakota had a whole bunch of chicken littles this week where legislators chose, chose fear and intimidation above freedom and the Constitution. And the reason I call these Convention of States opponents anti-constitutionalists is because they do not use wisdom or logic in problem solving. These are the same people that prevented President Ronald Reagan from getting a balanced budget amendment passed. These are the same people who would prefer to believe what um, super liberal Supreme Court Chief Justice Warren Burger has to say instead of Justice Antonin Scalia. Remember, Warren Berger is the gentleman we can thank for giving us Roe v. Wade and the infanticide of 56 million unborn babies. In Texas this week, we had a Senate committee hearing and had 28 volunteers provide testimony as to why Article 5 is the answer to restore the Constitution and rule of law in America. Our opponent's testimony was laughable. They looked small and pathetic. Really, the chicken littles of our day. They had no solutions except for, we must continue to do exactly what we're doing. Um, how has that worked out for us? As my favorite Governor Sarah Palin says, how's that hope and change working? It isn't. And that's why we're here. That's why Donald Trump was elected, to drain the proverbial swamp. 
What was amazing is that even when senators question these opponents in the Texas Senate hearing, they ask them, would doing this make you more comfortable? Would this make you more comfortable? And it was always a resounding no, 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 no new ideas. Same old, same old, beat your head against the wall, keep doing what you're doing. Which folks, by the way, this happens to be the definition of insanity. Look it up. Texas thankfully passed out of committee, mostly because of the courageous efforts of six senators who were willing to look to the Constitution for the answers that we need, who were willing to be brave and courageous. Unfortunately, Kansas and South Dakota didn't fare quite as well. Imagine, these are two, quote, so-called conservative states. They wouldn't vote for a solution that would allow the states to just come together, to convene and think up ideas and solutions in the form of amendments to fix the federal structure. Oh, but wait, Kansas, big government Republicans, did vote for the largest tax increase in state history. How's that going to work for all of you in Kansas? Talk to the hand. I feel nothing for you. Guess what? Elections have consequences. South Dakota fell to the fear of five traitorous legislators who had committed to voting yes, but pulled their votes at the last minute because they were scared the sky was falling. Not only that, the brave legislators who stood up in the gap for these ridiculous, ridiculous things going on at the federal level, these legislators have been harassed, threatened, and worse since their vote. Some of them have had to take down their Facebook pages. That is how ridiculous this is. And they're threatened, by the way, from people who claim to be conservatives and lovers of the Constitution. Sorry, people, you cannot claim to love the Constitution and then refuse to use it when you need to restore state power and sovereignty. At the federal level, it's time for Trump to clean house, and I am so glad he's good at saying, you're fired, because it's time to fire stinking everyone who was there under Obama. This whole shadow government operating within the intelligence community and State Department and the upper echelons of the federal Leviathan, forget about it. It's time for all these folks to go. That's where the swamp is. We can thank decades of Democrats and big, gov big government Republicans for corrupting the system that is degrading our structure and the institutions that are supposed to protect citizens and the rule of law. George Bush 41 and 43 get to take some of this big government credit as well. Some of these intelligence insiders have come forward to describe the, quote, shadow government of Obama holdovers, who are the ones leaking this information, spying on Trump administration officials, which, by the way, is highly illegal, a felony, treasonous, major jail time. I love Rand Paul. Senator Rand Paul this week said it's time to find these leakers and put them in jail for a very, very long time. And absolutely, that's what we should do. Can you believe this? Even Barack Obama, there are allegations that he is actively involved in everything from the leakers to the anarchist protests, which I believe is probably the most truth out of the fake news of anything. Right? So the challenge isn't that the news coverage is driven by leaks and not facts, but that dubious sources are claiming to leak on the leakers. I love it this week when Trump said Obama has left him a big mess. That's the Obama legacy. A big, fat, federal mess. A screwed up, messed up system that is irreparable, except for one amazing tool that we have that the states have, and that's called Article 5. We, the states, need to, to unite and step in to help clean the swamp, drain it, get rid of it, fill it in with concrete. We can't expect President Trump to go this alone. I, I pray for him. I have never in my life seen anyone hit so hard from all sides outside the White House, inside the government, even crazy John McCain spewing garbage from Europe. And still, President Trump rises, sits down at the Resolute desk, 
and works every day to make America great again with a smile, positivity, and a can-do attitude. He is absolutely the right man for the job right now for our nation. And I am so proud to see him stand up to all these forces against him. Folks, this is not just Democrats and Republicans. This is good versus evil. This is where we are at. Article 5 gives the people through the states the opportunity to unite and come up with solutions that could limit the size, scope, and jurisdiction of the federal government, call for fiscal restraint, and seek term limits for federal officials such as judges. In my dream of a future Trump presser, I would love to hear him say, well, my opponents have underestimated the American people. And as a result, I am giving my full endorsement to the Convention of States Project and the brave state legislators around this nation who are ready to help me drain the swamp once and for all by using Article 5 to call a Convention of States to propose amendments that will restore the Constitution and rule of law. And I am committed to doing everything I can from the White House to help them succeed. A girl can dream, people! And that, I promise you, at some point is going to happen. Because asymmetrical warfare is super important in going after this liberal progressive cancer that is in every dark corner of the federal government. Like that big giant hairball that you find in the spring when you really move the furniture and dust and clean. We must destroy Every bit of this disease, we must crush it. We must eradicate it from our nation. The Convention of States Project has 2.2 million grassroots activists in every House district in America. The time is now, and we are going to drain the swamp. But we're going to do it using Article 5 by calling a Convention of States. We can't expect one president to be able to do everything that needs to be done to fix the broken federal structure. It's time to beat back those who are trying to destroy the legitimacy of this new administration, who are trying to destroy the very foundations of our constitutional republic. We can do this. It is achievable. We can only do it if we unite together and we unite our states together. Join me at conventionofstates.com where you can learn more. You can always tweet me questions at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizz Radio. Have a blessed week. CPAC is coming up. How awesome is that? Lots of excitement there. I'm Tamara Colbert for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy, the Millennial Forecast, On Target, and the Crow's Nest is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, at Tanya Yoga 13, at S. Hagmeyer 2, and at FBR ABQ. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I'm also contributing to SarahPalin.com. Please check out my latest piece this week. Honored to be working on the governor's new site. I want to thank Tamara Colbert, Tanya Crow, Kelly Carlson, Sarah Hagmeyer, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Andre Soriano, and thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Full Battle Rattle. Visit Facebook.com slash Full Battle Rattle ABQ. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, and Laurieann Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.